The mysterious Havana syndrome, a strange collection of symptoms without a traceable cause, has been puzzling U.S. officials since it began occurring in late 2016 in Cuba. Symptoms include hearing noises similar to a mass of buzzing cicadas, headaches, nausea, insomnia, and more. Back in August, I did a radar outlining how Vice President Kamala Harris delayed her trip to Hanoi due to the mysterious illness. Yesterday, as Vice President Kamala Harris was set to make her way from Singapore to Vietnam, there was another attack, this time against two U.S. diplomats in Hanoi, the very place Harris was scheduled to arrive. And though Kamala Harris's trip was delayed, she did end up continuing on with her journey, and reports are the two affected diplomats were attacked in their homes and are being evacuated. But this incident shows us how vulnerable we are. We still have no idea who is behind these attacks, nor what weapon is being used, or at least us lay people have no idea. Writer and researcher Natalie Shore recently dug into what exactly the illness is, saying, quote, Havana syndrome is very likely a mass sociogenic illness. It's an admittedly imperfect catch-all to describe an extremely common phenomenon, and it certainly doesn't mean that patient symptoms aren't real. Natalie's here with us now to discuss. Welcome, Natalie. Thank you so much for having me. So in your research, you found that it's, it's more likely just a mass, uh, you know, people basically making it up. Right. I mean, it, that they're saying, oh, I, I have these symptoms. Why do you think that would be the case? Well, I would like to distinguish between sociogenic illness, uh, the way that I think it's played out in this case, and making it up. Uh, I think that for the most part, the people who say that they're suffering from this are being very sincere. They are experiencing symptoms like headaches, like dizziness, like nausea, like extreme fatigue. Those symptoms just aren't caused by an invisible weapon. Yeah, they're... they're I think you go into this, uh, the, the piece that you wrote uh, for Matt Iglesias' uh, uh, Substack, that's where it appeared, right? It was very good uh, about, you know, people can can truly be suffering pain or, or, or other problems and have it not really be well explained by current medical understanding. It doesn't mean that they're making it up. It just means we don't really know what the cause is and there might not actually be a cause that we can identify. Absolutely. Uh, the symptoms that they are experiencing are absolutely debilitating. I think that we can all think of times in our own lives or the lives of people that we know and love that have described things like this and have been, you know, absolutely sidelined by them. Uh, but they are very common symptoms. Uh, at any given time, one study showed that around 77% of people experiencing stress also experience physical symptoms associated with it. Uh, in the double digits at any given time, people are experiencing headaches, fatigue, dizziness. These can be really difficult to deal with, but they're very, very common. And the idea that their existence necessarily points to an attack is just not substantiated. Well, and, and we're having a, a, I mean, it's similar to the issue we're having to some degree with, with long COVID, which there, you know, there is evidence that some people do suffer uh, symptoms after uh, continue to have symptoms after an infection, but I, you know, I've also seen reports that there are people describing this wide range of symptoms, and then you find out you test them and you find out they don't have antibodies. They probably never had COVID in the first place, so it's 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 difficult to sort out you know true cases of yes, this is actually the illness we're we're talking about, and just because there are many symptoms are similar: headache, fever. You know, cough, congestion, it's, it's, that could be caused by any number of things. Tiredness, you know, muscle weakness, those are things caused by all sorts of issues, right? Absolutely. I think that there's a broad range of human suffering and that we should be very sensitive to that and very understanding. And in a lot of cases, the people experiencing those things need support uh, and they need understanding. Um, but that, that doesn't necessarily mean that the causes that we point to or the causes that the patients themselves point to uh, are the correct ones. And Natalie, in your experience, how do people respond when they're told that uh, the symptoms that they're feeling are not actually the result uh, of an invisible weapon from a foreign country? Uh, well, I haven't spoken to the patients themselves in particular. I think that, you know, they're pretty selective about who they speak to. Uh, but certainly in reports elsewhere and in the media uh, hits that they've done, I think that they are very, very wedded to the idea that this was caused by a weapon. And I think that that's probably for a variety of reasons. Uh, I think that it gives 
It gives them a reason to uh, understand why this happened to them. In a lot of cases, these people really have stopped working, have been debilitated enough that uh, they've had to take time off or permanently retire early. Um, and so I think that, you know, believing, believing that they were attacked is I, I, strangely a comfort, I guess. Uh, it's something that, you know, really resonates with them. And they've been very, very attached to the idea. And I think that there's also some evidence that they themselves, at least a, a patient cohort, has sort of become a, a political actor in its own right, um, that they did contribute toward pressuring um, the State Department to let go its former investigator because the former investigator didn't immediately rule out the idea of mass sociogenic illness. Um, so they are advocating for their point of view. Yeah, the only thing, you know, you know I've heard this theory before for sure um, in my research on this particular topic, but the reason why some people say they don't agree with this theory is because, for one, there have been reports where, for example, one family where the, the, the adults experienced the headaches at once. You know, suddenly they were in the dining room, they experienced this mass headache, this, this uh, pain, this ringing in their ears, and their son breaks out with a nosebleed right there. Um, the entire groups of people are experiencing this at the same time, not just kind of, oh, I'm feeling a little sick, or, you know, there seems to be this mass, um, I, which I guess would be why it's called mass sociogenic illness, but they're experiencing at the same time. And, and furthermore, when doing actual CAT scans on their brains, they do find physical, actual symptoms. They have found that they have brain damage, um, symptoms of a concussion, actual physical, this is showing up, so, or on an MRI. So it's, this is one of the reasons why they're saying they don't actually, you know, they've kind of I, this this theory was put out there. There was a theory that it was, you know, cicadas that were actually mating and that people were hearing this. There were all of these various theories, but they've still, I think, they haven't ruled out the fact that it might be either a weapon or some kind of spy you know, uh, surveillance type technology um, because of these physical symptoms that people are exhibiting. Um, so, so I would I would say a few things. One, uh, the descriptions of the symptom uh, symptom onset is, in most cases, uh, described in retrospect, sometimes separated by months. Um, and so, I think that you know we all know how, based on a certain belief or how things have turned out, we might describe something in retrospect differently. So, I'd I'd be um, a little wary of reading too much into that. Uh, as for some of the um, medical studies that have been done, you are right uh, that there have been two studies published in the Journal of American, uh, the American Medical Association uh, in 2018 and 2019 that um, are, you know, evoked to uh, invoke to substantiate the idea that, quote, something happened to these people. Um, but when you really look at the studies, um, that's that's not necessarily what they show. And, you know, the fact that they are used to make this argument has been widely criticized. Uh, the first study showed um, that on typical clinical MRIs, they didn't actually show anything amiss. Um, that, you know, the way that the, the way that abnormality um, was defined in the first study um, is so broad as to include around 40% of people. Um, the second study used a far more detailed type of MRI study that did show a couple of abnormalities, but you have to understand that an MRI doesn't <laughs> show a little sign that says a ray gun was here. Um, you know, it shows certain changes that are not super dissimilar from those that can be caused by any number of things, by stress, by depression, uh, by anxiety, by any other sort of injury, by substance use, um, things along those lines. So these are certainly not unprecedented things that we find in these MRIs. And even if the MRIs do look weird, that doesn't mean that there was a microwave rep weapon anywhere nearby. Uh, you mentioned the, the, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, yeah, I mean, if there, if there was a weapon, like trying to give the benefit of the doubt to the, the people arguing on the side of the, of the, of the weapon causing this, like, what type of weapon have they ever pointed to that we know exists and we know is capable of doing something like this or ha or have they not yet identified one so the difficulty there is that that theory hinges on the idea that this is 
uh, a directed energy weapon, probably microwave weapon, uh, that's used technology that we don't yet know about. So that mm -hmm. question isn't concretely answerable, um, but it doesn't necessarily comport with what we do know, uh, weapons that we do know exist. Um, you know, there have been various microwave weapons developed for crowd control over the years. They're not widely used and they don't cause chronic symptoms the way that Havana syndrome patients claim to experience. Yeah. All right, Natalie Shore, uh, we've been very interested in this subject, so we're happy to have you with us to talk about it. We hope you'll come back. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And tomorrow on Rising, we'll weigh in on the abortion debate being taken up by the Supreme Court as we speak. And Glenn Greenwald will join us to discuss the weaponization of the white supremacist label. You won't want to miss that. Team Rising will also join us to react to the latest news of the day. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss a video. And we will see you guys tomorrow. See you then.